Yes, I was diagnosed in 1972 with insulin-dependent diabetes. I was a freshman in nursing school. So back in those days, there wasn't a whole lot you could do other than just take your one lonely little shot a day and test your urine, which was not reliable in any way. And after about 10 years of that, then I developed peripheral neuropathy, which was very acute and excruciatingly painful. Uh, actually, my coming here to Dr. Grady was kind of a midway through a long process. I first began to notice in the year 2000 that my left foot was getting swollen and warm. And I went to, uh, was sent to our local podiatrist and uh, his first response was, well, maybe this is charcoal, let's take an x-ray. And uh, it didn't really show on the x-ray. So was not get, I was not getting any answers and it was getting bigger and hotter and then one day I looked down there's a big lump sitting out of the side of my foot and I thought maybe I had a neuroma or something so I'm back to the foot doctor and he looked at it again and did some more x-rays and my all my metatarsals had just collapsed my whole foot was broken and that was actually my bones sticking out the side of my foot. What Kathy had was Charcot foot. Charcot is the result of insensitivity, which is the result of diabetes in her case. And when you have insensitivity, your muscles can't hold up the joints. As a result, the joints start to collapse. Her foot took on a different shape, and therefore she started to get ulcerations on the bottom of her foot. Those ulcerations were debilitating. She couldn't function. Um, she had stopped her working and stopped her favorite thing to do, I think, which is horseback riding. And as a result, you know, her life was changing for the worse. Yes, um, actually, normally I'm a very active person, so being on bed rest for months was just killer depressing for me. Um, I have four horses, I ride, I'm cleaning stalls, I'm carrying 50-pound hay, hay bales here, there, and everywhere. And I like to hike. I like to take my dogs and go for walks in the woods. And of course, that was absolutely out for several years. So this is called charcoal reconstruction. So what we do with this is we do a large fusion across the joints that have collapsed, which in her case is the middle of her foot. Um, that middle of the foot collapse is the most common form of charcoal. And it's the collapse that gives her the pressure point that leads to the destruction that she had and the ulcerations and subsequent uh, infections and things. And so we just re, re uh, sort of break that, make it um, stable. We make it stable with a plate that she has in the bottom of her foot. And uh, she's done well since. Yeah, but I did make a full recovery with this foot. And about five years after the initial surgery, I developed it in my other foot. Um, this time we knew what it was right off the bat. I didn't waste a year trying to get a diagnosis and then another year trying to treat it. We went right into surgery. I'm back to doing the things that I love to do. I walk, I ride, I hike, I play with my dogs. Back in August I did a 5K. I didn't win it, but I finished. So I think that's pretty good for a 62-year-old woman anyway. Feet or no feet.